Mark, and this is my reflection 1.5 safety and policy for my OLTD 506 course on social media. Um, looking at the idea of safety and policy in the field of social media, uh, super interesting reading. Um, I think it really breaks down to the idea of banning versus teaching and um, I think there's no question that teaching is the way to go. Um, I think being more proactive, um, teaching positive skills is really important. I'm going to kind of go through, pick out some of the things that I found uh, interesting and inspiring. So from the Consortium for School Networking, um, 2011, um, they write, one of the most powerful reasons to permit the use of social media and mobile devices in the classroom is to provide an opportunity for students to learn about their use in a supervised environment that emphasizes the development of attitudes and skills that will keep them safe outside of school. And I think this really cuts to the heart of why we need to um, develop policy that includes social media, not just blanketly bans it and I, I think while we recognize that there are online risks and we need to be aware of these risks and we need to protect students from these risks or protect students from themselves as it may be um, that we we can't just keep them away from it because they're more likely to get into trouble outside of it or later on in their lives and I think also while reading that this material um, I so often reminded me how how close we are as professionals um, in, in the world of social media, you know, the idea of baiting, teacher baiting, where, you know, you could be one mistake away from ending your career. And, and you know, if, if, if I'm learning these lessons, then um, it sort of underlines how important it is for students to learn them as well as they're going to need them in a professional environment. So, um, looking at Adam Terrier's uh, 2012 work, The Six Things That Drive Techno Panics, um, kind of underlined, again, that um, all uses own words. Techno panics can encourage policymakers to adopt far-reaching controls on information flows and the information economy more generally. And I think this knee-jerk reaction um, to perhaps the overstated um, impact of uh, so you know, negative impacts of social media have have um, in some cases uh, led to sort of banning of social media and education. And uh, I think we're starting to see a shift. Hopefully, we're seeing a shift back to opening up and and developing policies that um, incorporate social media in a in a uh, helpful and a uh, safe way. Um, I found the ConnectSafety.org. Um, site and the article online safety 3.0 empowering protecting youth extremely valuable and I had outlined some tidbits here that I thought were um, fantastic so first one being safety is essential but only part of what we want for the people who are going to run this world and this really reminds me of uh, all of a ski trip that we had to get cancelled last year because uh, new principal was uncomfortable with uh, um, the policy and, and the safety risk and he felt it was in his best interest to protect himself to, to, to cancel the trip and I think he, he was justified um, and you know following that I did some research and found out you know what what our liability was and uh, what we need to do to be safe and uh, this year we'll be running a trip and so I think that it's important to to go in you know when, take that metaphor or that the parallel and move it towards online safety it's a, it's the same principle um, nobody wants to lose their job um, over negligent um, policy or lack of uh, due diligence. But at the same time, we don't want to stop taking advantage of fantastic opportunities, which both skiing and social media represent. <laughs> um, another piece from, or another um, quotation from Online Safety 3.0 is, young people are far more likely to be harmed by their peers or the consequences of their own online behavior than by adult criminals. And I found this extremely telling in, in, in the sense that, um, kind of going back to the techno panic, you, you know, this idea of online predators is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a vivid and it's a frightening idea, yet we're, we're more likely to be harmed by our own actions, um, sexting, um, cyberbullying things you know that we are doing and so 
the need to adopt social media and teach social media is, is so important because it's students need these skills in order to uh, navigate um, their career successfully. Um, just continuing on here. Um, looking at the impact of social media on children, adolescents, and families. Um, this article by uh, O'Keefe and Clark Pearson. The idea that, uh, I'm just going to use a direct quotation here, recent research indicates that there are frequent online expressions of offline behavior such as bullying, clique forming, sexual experimentation that have introduced problems such as cyberbullying, privacy issues, and sexting. Other problems that merit awareness include internet addiction, concurrent sleep deprivation. And um, I see this, uh, you know, I see these types of, uh, you know, even, even now I see these types of things in, uh, in my own experience. Uh, had a student, uh, excellent student, who was involved in a sexting issue, which then led to um, probably online cyberbullying and probably regular bullying, um, kind of a boyfriend girlfriend stealing incident. And um, you know, we're dealing with these things, and so understanding them is um, is important. And I think what's even a little bit more frightening, and I'm not an administrator, but from the administration's perspective, is is dealing with these issues without having a set policy or understanding perhaps the ramifications and I think that um, it's this sort of uncertainty that brings about the blanket policies of, of no Facebook or, or banning it because we're just not prepared or we're not understanding of the problems enough to to deal with them and, and I think it reinforces the need um, the important need to to push this area and to adopt things like social policy or social media policies that are, that are provincial or social media or scaffolding education that's that's going to work with students and I think with staff I think they're and I think that second part that the staff is probably as much in need of the training and the education as our students are um, so going through the list um, cyberbullying um, it's interesting to you know the different types or different uh, different manifestations: flaming, harassment, denigration, exclusion, outing, trickery, cyber stalking. Um, and again, looking at um, the, the theme that perhaps um, that these are overstated, that the prevalence of, of these issues are overstated. There, the keywords are often used, but they're not necessarily the instances are not necessarily. Um, any more than regular bullying, or they're just, uh, again, a, a, an addition to regular bullying. Um, the baiting one was scary, the idea of, of being baited by students. Um, you know, and I, again, I think that, and, and again, the sexting, even, <laughs> even for teachers, and, and looking at the cases where teachers were affected by, um, by baiting or sexting, or, or their own digital, uh, Prince. Um, revenge porn, something I'd never really heard about. I didn't know that they had sites like this. I suppose it makes sense. We have, uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just, uh, I don't even know how to comment on that. Um, just continuing on, online sexual predators and grooming. I'll never look at uh, the word grooming quite the same after this reading. Um, this surprised me though, the, the idea that um, and I'm quoting from Online Sexual Predators and Grooming, um, what is it right here, The um, from the uh, Megan Slaw Government Facts, uh, the, sorry, the Warlock and uh, Finkelhor article. It's important to note that research around sexual abuse indicates the vast majority is committed by people known to the child, 90%, with about 50% being a family member. And again, I think this contradicts the idea of... Um, Sort of these creepy stalkers sitting around um, in in, their, in a basement somewhere and hiding in the shadows, and I and I think that you know the idea that often these predators are um, are people we know, they're known to the family, they're friendly, they're charismatic. It's it just doesn't really fit the um, maybe the the stereotype that we we've, we've given. Um, sexual or asexual online predators. And um, so I think just finishing up um, with the idea of, of policy, I I don't 
you know, I certainly, for my own uses with, with social media in the classroom, I've, I've used Facebook in, in the classroom. Uh, I've had a page for clubs and teams. I don't friend students. I've never really thought that that, that somehow breaks us a certain line for me or crosses a certain line for me. I've never been comfortable with that. But um, I, I would certainly, or I certainly in the present would like to strengthen my own um, policies. And, um, you know, this year... Uh, I've done a lot more teaching on in the area of privacy, but uh, certainly following these readings in this course, I'd like to um, strengthen my policy and perhaps offer policy for other teachers in our school to take a leadership role on that. And um, I'm certainly interested and in, in, in fascinated by uh, looking at social media policy on a larger scale. And um, I think I'll close with that. Um... From Hang Slayer, I'll cl close with this great quotation. Uh, Practically speaking, social media policy needs to strike the right balance between controlling access, setting rules, and educating students for responsible use. And uh, I think that pretty much sums it all up. So, good night, and um, thanks. Justin Marks, sort of signing out.